guru theory. If someone wants to become a, a guru in ISKCON, then there has to be a, a no objection vote taken. And if there's no objection by any GBC member, then they become guru automatically. <laughs> this is the qualification. So this political kind of arrangement for making guru would never work. And neither the Ritvik theory has been proven to work. How many disciples have these Ritvik people initiated? Huh? How many new devotees have they created? Huh? They don't report the number of new devotees because it's so embarrassingly small, so tiny, vanishingly small, that they don't talk about it. Uh, they say this is a wonderful new theory and this is actually what Prabhupada wanted and so on and so forth. But if it's actually what Prabhupada wanted, it would be what Krishna wanted. And if it was cri what Krishna wanted, it would work. Because Krishna never gives any impractical advice. All of Krishna's uh, instructions in Bhagavad Gita and so forth are completely practical. If you follow them, you get the result very reliably. That's our experience. So if you follow some instruction that's given in Vedas, then it's going to have a good result. And we experience that good result every day. Uh, but if someone is following some speculation or some uh, deviation uh, or something in, in defiance of the order of the spiritual master, they're not going to get anywhere with it. Uh, it's, just, it's just a waste of time and energy. And when we look at the, the scene of our God brothers today, that's all we see. We see them wasting their time and energy, making uh, futile efforts uh, because it's all politically motivated. So when this mood starts to develop in this Sangha, we say, okay, you either correct yourself or you have to leave. Uh, we're not angry at anybody. We don't, it's not like we enjoy kicking people out. We don't. But we have to to maintain the purity of the Sangha so that we can continue to preach and teach the very, very elevated and advanced subject matters uh, without any distortion. Then later on, you see all these videos and these different essays and and things that will become compiled into courses and books and be used to instruct students in the future about how they can become qualified to be pure devotees. So it's a necessity that we keep this association very pure, even if it's very small. We don't mind. Quality is better than quantity. When it comes to satisfying Krishna, you cannot measure the results by quantity, but the quality is very, very important. Krishna is satisfied if there's one pure devotee. Uh, that means the lineage will continue and the same teaching will be available to the next generation. But uh, if there's two or three, that's very nice also. <laughs> My mood is that, you know, I'm 63 years old and I'm basically retired and I have a pension coming. I'm not dependent on the donations from students or devotees. Actually, all the money that we get in donations from the devotees goes right back into offering services to the devotees. We don't live off of that money. We don't, uh, our travel expenses, our living expenses and all are covered by my pension. You see, so any, any uh, donations that come, we, we invest them right back into programs that will be used to educate the devotees and, you know, in the future, maybe we'll have a community or an ashram someplace in India, uh, depending on what Krishna wants. But what Krishna wants, we're absolutely sure of that Krishna wants all of our devotees to be kind, respectful, truthful, pure and learned. So if, they, if some of the devotees begin to confuse things and start to uh, preach some other philosophy, 
Well, we have no objection for, for, for uh, about that. They can go anywhere they like and, pre and preach anything they like. Just don't do it here. Don't do it on our time. Don't do it on our network. Don't do it to our students. Uh, and if you do, you make an offense. And that offense can only be counteracted by dealing with the issues with me. You see, and that's the last thing they want to do. All these people who have left our group in the last couple of weeks did so without talking to me, without bringing up any issues to me, without hearing any explanation or accepting any correction from me. So we can see by their mood actually what their attitude is that they don't really believe in their philosophy that they're preaching because if they did, then they would be able to convince me that it's actually Vedic. And I'm easy to convince, just show me some scripture. If it's in the Vedas, I'll accept it. If it's in Prabhupada's books, I'll accept it. But the thing is, they cannot show even one word of scripture to justify their arguments. So they have to sneak off very quietly into the sunset uh, without saying anything because they actually can't defend their views. Maybe they can impress someone who uh, has no knowledge, who's very new, very impressionable, very uh, easily influenced. But, you know, when it comes down to the real truth, you know, like some of them, one of them today wanted to post the truth, you know. <laughs> But the actual standard of truth is what's in the Vedas, not what's in your head. That's, that's, part of our, that's part of our philosophy that the human mind and intelligence are fallible. They're limited. They make mistakes all the time. That's why we need the Vedas. That's why Krishna gives the Vedas. But if someone hasn't even read them, how can they claim to represent them? It takes a good five years to read through Srila Prabhupada's books one time. So, you know, someone who's only been a devotee a few months probably hasn't even got through Bhagavad Gita. What to speak of any of the other books. The Bhagavad Gita is just the intro. So, um, this always happens. I mean, every time there was a big victory in Srila Prabhupada's movement, then we would see that Maya would attack. And there would be schisms and then revolutions and coups and uh, different kinds of internal dissent within Srila Prabhupada's organization. And so many devotees would leave. I remember when the fifth canto came out, when Prabhupada translated the fifth canto of Srimad Bhagavatam, because it contradicts, supposedly contradicts, Western scientific knowledge about astronomy, so many devotees left the movement. Huh? Actually, it happened every time Prabhupada published a new book. Huh? Somebody would be freaked out by what was in it, and they would leave. Oh, this is impossible. Can't be true. So, you know. In the long run, Srila Prabhupada's books uh, are going to prevail against all different arguments and points of view. If we understand them properly, they can even be harmonized with Western science. Because there's nothing wrong with Western science uh, except that they believe certain theories to be true, which have never been proven. And then they use them as assumptions for developing further theories and so on. So if you, if you have a theory that has not been proven, and then you develop another theory based on it, then that theory is unproven too, and so on and so forth. So there are actually many, many uh, theories that are taught in school as knowledge, but are based on theories that have not been proven, for, like the Big Bang and so on, evolution and so on. Uh, those theories cannot be proven. They, they uh, have two little evidence to prove. Statistically, for example, the number of 
fossils that we have from the past is such a tiny, tiny sample that it's, it's statistically insignificant. Uh, you have, there's a test in statistics that from a, a, a certain amount of data, you have to have so many data points to say that you have a valid sample. And the, the evidence used to support uh, evolution is not a statistically valid sample. So they can't prove it. They'll never prove it. What to speak of things like the Big Bang? How are you going to go back and prove the Big Bang? And there's so many alternate explanations for the phenomena that are quoted as evidence for the Big Bang. But of course, when somebody comes up with one of these, they simply quietly fire them from their university positions and delete all their articles from the journals. And you know, that's the last you hear of them. Right? But there's even a PhD, a Nobel Prize winning physicist uh, 